Yeah, welcome back to another monthly tip for CSB. Today is going to be a little bit of an update with an order tip that I made on the line art process. Since then I've learned a lot about Clip Studio Paint as a program and a lot more about vector layers and the more, let's call them hidden subtools that you actually have at your disposal to not only improve your overall line art process but quicken a lot of the steps in between. So without further ado, let's get started. So before I start with my lineup process, I actually try to think about the third step already. What kind of drawing am I trying to make here? Is it going to be a manga style drawing or a 3D semi coloration or a 2D coloration drawing? Depending on that, I adjust the way I do my line art style. As an example for semi 3D colorations, I will only use very very thin lines meaning 0.7 and I will sometimes go up to 1 but never fix Thicker than that. With manga style drawings or even manga pages, I like to go with a brush size of one or two because it helps me to visualize the final line art a lot better than if I start off with two thin lines. For 2D coloration, it really depends on what kind of emotion I want to express with the drawing. For an example, this little bunny girl picture, it's very light-hearted, very bright, and it has a very delicate atmosphere. So to that delicate atmosphere, thinner lines just fit it a lot better than thicker lines. So that's something that you will have to take a look at case by case depending on what it is you're trying to convey with your picture. Alright, let's quickly go through them. When drawing a character or an object that is in the middle of moving and you would like to emphasize that fact, try putting in these movement lines at the side where it's moving from. For gentle motions, use thinner lines and only a few of them. If it's a quicker motion, use more lines that stretch out a lot longer over the panel. If there is a certain force behind it, also incorporate some thicker lines in between to portray that. Point of caution. That's right, be careful when you put in these motion lines that you actually delete the line out of a character or object beneath it. Don't leave those lines in. The whole idea here is to portray motion blurs, so leaving the lines in of a character or the object will make them look consistent and in return make them look inconsistent with the motion we're trying to portray. Next, since we're already in the topic of movement, let's go into action. Let's say you have a character that's throwing a heavy punch right into the front of your panel, right in front of the camera so to speak. How do you further emphasize the force behind that punch? Of course you have your movement lines already there, but there's something extra that you can do. Make the fist the object that's closer to a camera a lot thicker and the object that is more distant to a camera, in this case the body, a lot thinner. This will add that extra depth to your panel and make it look like this is flying right towards the reader, jumping out of the panel, it's closing in and there's a lot more impact suddenly in that picture of yours. It's more expressive and it feels so much more entertaining to look at. Requesting a promo to move subject along. So that's movement and perspective. But what about the personality and the characteristics? How do you express those with your line art? When I talk about expressing personality and certain characteristics, I'm very sure that you've already seen that in the mangas you like to read, but may not be conscious that there's already visual storytelling going on there. For an example, for this very fragile, bedridden character, I will use inconsistent lines where he is thicker than the background so to lift him up for a reader, but there are a lot of spots where the line art fades out into nothing and it further emphasizes how his body is shaking and it's unstable. We are telling the reader that this character is a point of attention as the background is drawn with thinner lines, but at the same time we are portraying that this character is almost swaying out of focus, like they are so fragile and weak that they are barely able to be in focus. On the opposite end, when you have a manga like Jojo's Bizarre Adventure and very much so any manga that has very muscular and big characters, you will often see that the muscles of their body use thicker lines than the rest of their skin parts. That's also to further emphasize this bulge of muscle coming out of their body and just emphasizing their overall strong presence and physical form. 
And there is so much more with lineup that you could get into, but I will be kind enough to spare you my rambling and cut it off here. And we will now move on to vector layers and all the sub tools that you don't want to miss. First, let's establish what vector layers are. They are a blessing from the mangaka gods and you will worship at their feet. <laughs> but in all honesty, they are actually very, very helpful. The main difference between normal layers and vector layers is that meanwhile when you do a stroke on a normal layer, it's one object. Like a PNG file that you would import into CSV, you can erase it and move it around. With vector layers, when you draw a line, it's individual vector points that are connected with the line. You can adjust each of those vector points, delete them, move them, redraw them or change the line width. Think of it like the breadcrumbs that Hansel and Greta used to mark their way back home. All of those little singular crumbs building that long line. And in this case, this long line leads to more clean and quicker line art. But we'll start with the easiest vector tool, the vector eraser. This is a tool that I use quite frequently, so it's probably nothing new to you, but still I feel like it deserves being mentioned for those who might not know about it yet. The vector eraser deletes all of the vector lines that you brush over up until the point where they cross another vector line. This is why I really like to use this tool for the hair of a character. As mentioned before, I really like freely moving my hand while drawing how to naturally flowing hair. And without a vector layer, it would take so long to get rid of all of those lines crossing each other and would be so tiring since you would have to make a new layer. So when erasing, your lines don't look chopped, they still look clean and that's just so, so, so much work that you can just cut out. Use the vector layer instead. Just draw the hair as you would naturally would. Don't care about erasing the lines crossing other lines. And after you're done with everything, choose a vector eraser and brush over those lines crossing each other that you no longer want, that you want to delete and bam, it's done. <laughs> It's magic. And now we're getting into a more hidden sub tools. So open up your program, go down on the taskbar and at the very bottom there should be the control point icon. Click on that bad boy and now I'll introduce you to a game changer. And since I am such a tease, I am introduced the sub tools from Oh, that's very easy to understand and useful to Noni. For spots like this with vector lines that are too short to erase, what I like to do is to just go to correct line, control point and then delete point. Here the name's the game and all it does really is delete the vector point. Simple but useful. Next, of the bottom of the correct line subtools, you've got redraw vector line. This one's a little bit more tricky to use. It works best for me for spots where there is only one vector line so you don't accidentally touch another line and redraw that one. So I mainly use it when I have to redraw the ends of hair strands. Coming up next is the connecting vector line subtool. This is another tool that I like to use for retouching the line art when it's done. Sometimes they have this really, really, really small gaps in between lines and rather than correcting their manually and making it look more unclean, you can just use the sub to brush over the gap and then a line will be created between those two vector points. You can adjust the sensitivity of the connect line tool by pulling it up here, setting it higher so larger gaps can be closed. But be cautious because when you set it so high and you try to close up a smaller gap, then you will have this issue occurring. So, for smaller gaps, use a lower sensitivity, and for bigger gaps, use a higher sensitivity. Oh, it cuts out so much time. <laughs> Yay. Wait, 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 I need a drum roll. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We redraw vector line with sub tool. No kidding, guys. This sub tool is so amazing i'm trying not to curse <laughs> and the best part of it all is this tool is very easy to use after selecting the tool select which brush size you would like to redraw the line with then by slowly increasing the pressure that you put into your pen brush over the parts that you would like to thicken 
This tool works in a very convenient way where only the line that you click on when redrawing it will be affected. All other vector lines that might even cross that line will not be affected. Let me demonstrate. So you change the line width from one vector point to another vector point. But only between those two vector points in that vector line. Anything outside of that stays the same. As mentioned, I really, really love doing the line art. It's my favorite step of the whole drawing process. But I sometimes go overboard with the thickening of lines and it will take me hours to fully do so. Thanks to this subtool, it is so much quicker. I will first use this subtool to thicken the lines as I see fit and then I will go in, create a new vector layer. Don't use the same vector layer, create a new one and I manually add more details as I see fit. The last subtool that I'm going to introduce kind of links back to what we just talked about with redrawing the line width. For this subtool, go to adjust line width and then down there fix width. Now what this tool does is change the line width and when you click on process whole line, if you check that box, it will change the line width of the whole line. Why is this useful? Well, we just thickened our lines with the redraw line width tool. But let's say after doing that and you're done with the line art, you realize, oh shoot, I actually want to do a semi-3D coloration for this drawing. But now I've destroyed my line art, already thickened it. Do I now redraw the whole line art? No, 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 no. No need for that. Remember when I said make all the manual adjustments for the thickness on a different vector layer? Here's the reason why. When we thicken lines manually, usually what we do is draw more and more lines to make it look thicker, meaning creating multiple vector lines on top of each other. If we change the width of those vector lines and make them thin again, or thicker, it will look awful. But if you have thickened your line art by using the redraw subtool, well then there is only one vector line. There aren't multiple vector lines. There you've only changed the actual line width between those vector points. So at any point in the drawing process, you can go back and change that width again. You can actually experiment this way a lot easier and a lot quicker. So. If you want to be able to adjust your line width without destroying the whole line art composition and the arrangements of the lines, then please only use singular vector lines when drawing the line art and any other details you would like to add manually with a G pen or other brush, do them on a different vector layer. So this encompasses all of the subtools that I wanted to introduce to you. Let's see what we've learned today. When doing manga line art, the thickness and thinness of the lines portrays different personalities and different characteristics. You can additionally use line width to express motion and perspective. Let's get to the correct line subtools. Using the subtools like connect vector lines or delete point or redraw a vector line along with a vector tool eraser will help to give you cleaner results when you're retouching upon your line art. Using the subtool redraw vector line width will drastically quicken your whole line art process. And since you are adjusting the line width of a line connecting the vector points, but not the position of the vector points themselves, if you are not satisfied with how your drawing looks with thicker lines, you can always go back and thin out those lines again. With the subtool adjust line width, fix width, this does not only quicken the process of thickening the line art, but also allows artists to more freely experiment around with their line art style and a coloration. See which line art style fits their coloration or their screen tone base the most. So that's it for today. Try out all of these subtools and let me know if they help to improve your line art process. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. So, Sakina, approval of quiet. Determine appropriate correction measure for subject 153-R year 9. Determination complete. Preparing execution of correction measure death beam. Subject instructed to stand still. Subscribe.
Scripture, Recover.